Welcome to a fantastic edition of Rebellion's Educational Series. Let's look at artificial intelligence in Europe with the fantastic AI mind, Thomas Calstanius. Dr. Calstanius was the head of the Luxembourg Institute of Science and uh, Technology uh, as a doctorate um, and education from uh, Uppsala University and uh, the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. Uh, Dr. Calstanius, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you, Alex. It's great to be with you. So tell us why you stepped down as the director of Luxembourg Institute to pursue your uh, deep tech venture. Uh, I, well, I have done, uh, I did my PhD, uh, my CEO job in, in Luxembourg for almost five years. And uh, uh, as you can imagine, as the CEO for a fairly large research institute, I, I come across a lot of technologies and uh, it's always been in the spirit of my mindset to build new companies based on core technology. It's, it's not, if there's one red line through my career is to do that. And, uh, and now that I kind of decided just move on, it's because I found some interesting technologies that I want to build some companies around. So that's basically the story. So you feel that Europe is a hotbed for AI right now, or do you think it has catching up to do with the US and Asia? Well, I mean, they, both. Huh? I mean, what, what's interesting here in Europe right now, and I think we maybe jump into the topic, is we have some catching up to do. Huh? Uh, that, that, that's for sure. Uh, Europe has not always been in the forefront, on specifically on the business side. From a research perspective, I think we're doing fine. But sometimes we don't translate our research in to the business and business values which we would like. And that's also partly why I'm on this endeavor I'm in right now. Huh? Uh, but secondly, I think it's also, and that's bit my message here, keep an eye on what's happening on the le legislation, the regulation point of view, because there's a lot of things going on in Europe and we're approaching um, something which is close to the, you know, when the GDPR, the you know, data protection regulation came around a few years back. It's the same moment right now for AI here in Europe and maybe beyond. So I wanted to discuss that a bit. So yes, there's a lot of things going on, both on the research side, but also on the regulatory side. Are you worried about the regulatory side or do you think it will help? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I think clever regulation uh, is helpful. I think AI needs to be regulated in some sense, but it should be regulated with with in, in a clever and conscious way so i mean this can swing both ways uh, but 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 the, the proposal as it stands is not bad it's a good starting point for this uh, but I, I think we all sense that ai is amazing uh, but there are cases when we need to look into what is the you know what is the risk of implementing ai in certain types of systems so that's a bit the story in the space industry in the U.S., there's regulation, but there's also quite a bit of funding from the government. Uh, do you feel that you know, Europe, which has traditionally provided a lot of research grant funding, um, is behind uh, AI research right now? So do you think it's 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 research uh, being funded as well as regulation, or do you think you're kind of turning to the point where the government's wary of AI? No. Uh. Well, here in Europe, we have uh, these big research programs coming from Europe, right? We have these so-called framework programs, and we're now in what we call Horizon Europe, which is the one of the, the, the framework program right, running right now. And, um, and for us working with research and innovation here in Europe, of course, this is one of the guiding lights to, to, to get you know, support and funding on the European level. Uh, which is uh, competitive. Uh, it's always been competitive and it should be competitive, but it is quite competitive, I have to say. And uh, then it depends on which country you're operating in. So um, my, my main habitat is uh, Belgium and Luxembourg, and I think both countries are very much in the forefront of funding research associated with artificial intelligence and, and different aspects of it. So I think this is our I say two countries which keeps a uh, high high profile when it comes to innovation and AI. The, 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 but that's not always the case for all countries in Europe. Some some are let's say more more proactive on this space than than uh, than Belgium and Luxembourg. But I've, I've been fortunate to operate in these countries, and I think they're relatively. I've, I've gotten the sense that France has really been ahead of the curve on the AI level. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I'm, I never really worked in France, although I live very close. To France. <laughs> they, they have, uh, 
I mean, they, they, they have certainly very good research and they have been quite focused on certain aspects of, of um, funding. That's true. And they have very good research institutes in and uh, universities in France. Uh, so, yes, I would say yes. Uh, but they're, they're not the only one. Huh? Uh, and uh, right now I'm, I'm working, for example, in Belgium here at the IMIC Research Institute, which is also one of the leading institutes when it comes to more hardware-oriented AI. You know, Belgium has a history of you know, hundreds of years of you know, progress and research and you know, really being ahead of the curve in terms of uh, human civilization. So that's you know, not to be surprised. But do you no. feel that all of Europe has embraced AI or do you think there are a lot of countries that are kind of lagging behind you know, Belgium and France maybe? Uh, I mean, the, 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 maybe two different facets to that. I think no country can avoid the application of AI. I think it's, I mean, the, that you will be tuned if to, to, to not see that. Then this question is, can we be leading the research and innovation of it? Not only the use of it, but also, you know, push the boundaries of, of innovation for it. And and that depends. Huh? Uh, but I, I I think both Belgium and Luxembourg and also Sweden, where I'm, you know, my mother country is also very proactive on this and trying to find a niche where, where we can make a difference. Uh, also acknowledging that these countries are pretty small uh, compared to where you come from. I mean, we Belgium is about 9 million uh, people, Sweden is same and you know Luxembourg is less than one million so these are these are countries which have to play a clever specialization strategy because they can never you know be as big and powerful as the United States in that respect but we can also do things in a you know with a small with somewhat less means but with a, a lot of speed and agility you can come from quite far as well you know, now that uh, Russia has invaded Ukraine and Europe is a little more concerned with uh, their defense, do you think that will attribute to a greater spend towards AI development and AI research? Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, many many countries in Europe are members of NATO. And uh, as you know, the, um, Belgium is and Luxembourg is and Sweden is hopefully soon to become a member of NATO. And uh, this comes with certain obligations in terms of you know spending. And some countries uh, cannot really spend it on military aircraft and stuff like this. Simply, it's not possible. So, um, which points to research. Uh, so that that makes the whole debate about how much research have we do in, in defense. Uh, but it's also, uh, which I think everyone is pretty much concerned with, given the very, very difficult geopolitical situation we face here. And you know, we, Ukraine is not far from us. Uh, we, we can drive there in one day from here. So it's, it's not far at all. Huh? Uh, it has also triggered a lot of uh, let's say debate internally because many research institutes uh, have blankly said no to this type of research in the past. It's, it's more difficult to do so now. I mean, now we have to look into a new geopolitical situation where we also need to, let's say, protect and defend. Uh, but so it, it's an interesting ethical consideration which is has been, is ongoing among many countries and research institutes. You know, the ethical situation is definitely uh, you know, well known. Of course, you know Gary Marcus, Jeffrey Hinton were among the many AI minds that signed the the six month pause on AI research, which I was I thought that was absolutely insane. Personally, I'm not someone who ever believes in pausing research or development. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm for good regulation. I'm for good safety protocols. But the mm -hmm. idea of, of pausing uh, work to me is just. I, I believe you can lead or get out of the way. Um, well, I, 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 I have the same feeling as you have. I mean, just looking back at my career, I mean, Sweden had the kind of embargo not doing research on nuclear energy. I mean, that's also mad, right? I mean, well, it's better to develop it in a good sense. I mean, I, I prefer that the good guys do it in the right way than the otherwise. Otherwise, the, you know, the technology is not good or bad per se, but we must make sure that the good forces are kind of pushing it for the good use of it. <laughs> Well, sadly, nuclear power has developed a negative connotation in the public, which is really a shame. Uh, Rebellion mm -hmm. actually sat down with uh, uh, the UN's head of the Fukushima um, uh, Oversight uh, Board. And mm -hmm. what we found was, you know, the fish are actually edible within five to 10 miles of the Fukushima plant. Um, you know, it, it's it's a disaster that was very manageable. And nuclear power offers a just an amazing uh, cost-benefit analysis. So um, I'm definitely no. a fan. No. Well, I mean, uh, nuclear power, if you look from an environmental point of view, it, it has a lot of benefits. I mean, it's relatively clean and so on. But that, of course, it's quite disturbing to see in Ukraine when they, you know, use this as a weapon, right? They start to attack nuclear power plants, and that, that's a risk. So 
I mean, it's not an it's a multifaceted problem, huh? uh, but to say blank no to it. It's I fully disagree with that. The research must continue in this as well, and then we have to have a clever regulation around it. Well, are you worried about any of the specific regulation coming out soon? Is there something that you don't like in it? No, I, I mean, I think uh, what, what is interesting, if I now may jump to this European AI Act, I'm not, I'm not sure how much that has resonated across the pond, but to just give a bit of background. So here in Europe, we're going to introduce the first legislation, the first legal uh, framework on artificial intelligence. I mean, this is a Europe-wide law, basically. So it's it's not it's not an intention, it's not a goodwill, it's not, you know, it's, it's really law in Europe. That means that all countries in Europe and anyone who wants to do any business in Europe must simply comply with it. Uh, and uh, and I, I think a lot of companies also, which may have the basis in the United States, also have an interest of you know continue their operations and, and serve uh, European customers. So that's a bit why I wanted to highlight that. Um, Dr. Kalsenius, you grew up in Sweden, right? Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Sweden and Denmark have such an amazing history of research and science. Uh, you know, two two of my favorite countries when it comes to. Uh, you know, professors constantly, mm -hmm. constantly impressed by uh, you, you know uh, your your neck of the woods. Um, so Thanks. we're we're coming, I guess, to the end of our show. Uh, do you want to uh, bring our audience some uh, closing thoughts on Europe and AI and, and AI in general? Uh, well, I mean, I, I I'm a techno optimist, uh, so I think it's a, it's an amazing time we go through, and I think AI is a wonderful wonderful thing that we can will help us and continue to you know be a, a good thing for humanity but we need to develop this technology for good uh, and that will require thoughtful uh, innovation leaders but also clever regulations so uh, we would happy to continue the discussion with our friends across the pond to see how we can do that and i it's uh, it was great to be at your show huh? well, Alex, thanks for inviting well. me huh? Oh. This was a lot of fun, but you know, we human beings do have a history of taking any technology and using it for bad. Since yeah. you know, we do we do love our wars, and so it's just you know, humans will humans will do evil with almost anything. Uh, it's just kind of an inevitable uh, avenue, unfortunately. But um, I'm excited to learn about your deep learning company, and hopefully, you'll come on in the future when you're ready to discuss uh, that work. With, with pleasure. I'm going to still in a stealth mode, but I'm happy to discuss it in due well, time. So thank you, Alex. Fantastic, Doctor. And I uh, wish you all the best of luck and uh, have a wonderful autumn. Thank you so much.